vlogmas day one uh this is my first video for vlogmas and i'm very excited to be participating this year we will see how i do with getting through um 24 days of a video each day i have been preparing i have been trying to be ready and today i wanted to bring you my december tbr it's a big one and uh, I have no idea if I'm going to be able to get through all these books in December, but I do have about nine days off of my day job. And so I'm hoping I'm going to have lots of downtime and be able to fit in some really great books before the end of 2019. So the first one I wanted to tell you about was the book that I am going to be reading with the book club that I sometimes participate in, Real Life Book Club. Uh, it is um, held at my work, so I don't always read the books with them, but I have read two other books with the book club this year, and they read about 10 books a year. They meet 10 months out of the year, and so I had suggested The Good Earth by Pearl S. Buck, and so that is going to be my first completed read of December. I need to start reading this book um, as soon as I finish um, the one that I'm wrapping up right now and uh, get it read by the uh, 12th of December, I believe, is when we meet. So that will be my first read of December. Next, I have This Wound is a World by Billy Ray Belcourt. This is a poetry collection, and this poetry collection won Best Canadian Poetry Collection, according to CBC, um, in 2017. So these are um, prose, it says it's part memoir, part manifesto poems, and Billy Ray Belcourt is a gay author, gay First Nations, indigenous author, and I'm really excited to delve into these. This will be my 12th poetry collection of uh, 2019, so excited to check that one out. To wrap up my uh, bingo card, two lines from... Uh, reading Through the Ages challenge, I am going to read The Thornbirds by Colleen McCullough. Now, this is also uh, going to be part of my 1970s project. I originally had a different book picked out for the Australia, pre Australia pre-1900 prompt because this book is not pre-1900, it's post-1900. Uh, but when I was looking over my list, I realized I really wanted to get the books in the 1970s project um, closer to being finished. I think this book will put me halfway through my list of 10. And so even though I'm cheating a bit and it's not pre-1900, I'm going to count it because it's the last book that <laughs> will be counted in that line and I want to read this one. So really excited. This book was also published the year I was born. So it has um, a few different little boxes that it's ticking for me. And this is a colonial story. This is a family epic. Um, it was made into a mini series, sometimes in the 80s, I believe, which I never watched. But um, I'm really excited to read more about the Australian outback and three generations of stories and all the drama that happens in families over that time. So every December, I like to read at least one book that has a Christmas theme. I find it's just really fun to get in the mood and um, just kind of escape into a Christmassy themed book. And so this year I have picked Christmas at Carnton by Tamara Alexander. I hope that's how you say that. Uh, this is based on an estate that is in Tennessee in the United States. And it is taking place during the Civil War, I believe. And it's about a widow who um, is kind of desperate and trying to survive. And um, she meets a man, a soldier, who is no longer able to um fight and has been assigned to help a ladies aid society and they meet and i think a romance ensues and so uh, this will be my christmas read for 2019. next i have breakfast with scott by michael downing this book was recommended by um, Sean from Sean the Book Maniac and what I liked about this was that it is a story of two men uh, in a relationship who are very committed and have a wonderful life and then they uh, face the challenge of being um, presented with a young boy that uh, they 
made a promise to his parents previously that if anything happened to them they would raise him and the challenge has appeared and it's about their life together it made me a little bit nervous when it said it's humorous because i find if a book uh is called humorous in the description i often don't find it humorous and this year i even dnf'd one that was supposed to be super funny so i'm hoping that i really like it as much as sean did and i also am trying to read more own voices and so um all the books i've read that center around um gay life um it have been written by women and so i wanted to read a perspective written by a gay man himself and so that is what breakfast with scott will be Okay, and this was in my November TBR, and I am still not done it. This is Ruska, the novel of Russia. So I just wanted to say I will also be continuing this into December. It's going to probably take me into the first two weeks of December. I'm hoping to get it done. And um, so far, yeah, it's a good one. Also for reading through the ages. And last but not least is Hot Sun, Cool Shadow by Angela Morils. And I picked this out because I've been craving memoir a lot. And this is a really interesting concept to me. Um, Angela lives in Vancouver for part of the year. And then she lives in the south of France for the other part of the year. And this is about her and her husband's life in the south of France. And they live in a region of the south of France where we stayed when we were there, the Lange de Coselet. And so it's further to the east. It's closer to Spain than it is to um, Monte Carlo. So further, you can see here, it's this area. So we stayed in Montpellier when we were there for two weeks and we visited Nîmes. We did a lot of travel in here, more on this edge. So more on the more Western side of this province, but um, it's such a beautiful region. There's so much wonderful things and I'm always kind of craving going back to France. So I thought this would be a great way to um, scratch that itch a little bit. And also I wanted to read one more Canadian author before the end of the year. And so Angela will be filling that bill. And uh, yeah, so that is my December TBR. That's seven books. And I think I can do it. I think that having time off is going to be helpful in me completing all these books. And um, let me know what you're going to be reading for December. And I'd especially like to know if you have any Christmas themed books that you love. I think it's very hard to do just general searches for Christmas themed books. And um, so I'm always looking for recommendations for those. So thank you very much for watching. I'm very excited to be with you every day for Vlogmas and uh, I will talk to you again soon.